Bip. So just talk to me. Tell me your tell me what's going on with you. What's going on right now? It's like wherever you are, wherever you are feeling. How do you feel right now? Right now, me, I'm scared. Yeah, you're scared? What's scared? Are you looking confused? Are you confused? Yeah, well, I'm, uh... Hold on, just a second. I'm trying to, like... I know you haven't been sitting here preparing for 20 minutes, which is okay. So no, I know, and that's why I'm trying to get over the scared, because the scared is Brad. That's okay. Here, All not. I want to do is... You start talking to me about your specifics and it'll fall into place. Okay. I'm confident. Well, and a lot of it, what I'm telling you is like, I, I've had a hard time writing these specifics. I set up like, I set up blocks where I've got an idea and I just kind of want to like talk them through and see how they happen. So Yeah, exactly. I, well, see, you just need to start okay. so that I can and help you. Can ask me specific? I, just tell me any specific thing you, that comes to mind right now. Like, I don't want to say, tell me about this. What do you want to tell me about right now? I'd say the first thing that I'd tell you about would be um, growing up. I'll tell you about my father. My father is, I'll start there, just describing him. My father was this huge, huge man. He was like six foot four, bald. His right eye didn't kind of like didn't always 100% follow the left eye. So it wandered a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it wandered a little bit. He always had incredibly yellow teeth because he was constantly chewing tobacco. But he has big, direct, brooding voice. Is he bulky? Bulky, yeah. You could tell that he used to be bigger, but for whatever reason, he wasn't anymore. He had a very creaky way of walking. He, walking around the house was very direct, but always took him a while to get wherever he was going. How did that big bulkiness, because you're not that tall, are you? No, 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 no. How'd that make you feel? He was an incredibly scary man. So I felt and scared? I, yeah, I felt, I felt scared all the time growing up. I mean, mm -hmm. you saw this I saw guy that. walking around and you wondered why. Like, I wondered. I wondered. I wondered why he was never, he was never anything but a man. He wasn't a father. To me, he was, he would show lovingness to Jess and to Amelia, but he was always harsh. How did he show them love? The only time he ever showed any of us love was when he would lay down with them. And he would, Jess and I are the same age, we're, we were twins, we are twins, and I can remember as far back as my memories were, he would pull Jess out of our dual bed, and he would take, take her with him to go to bed. How'd that make you feel? Were you jealous? Yeah, it made me feel really jealous. And I remember I'd sneak by every once in a while and I'd look in the crack in their door and he'd have his arm around her and she looked peaceful and he looked peaceful and I just never knew why he did that to me. And one day I actually, I crept out of bed. And I remember walking down to this the all oak wood floors. We had a small house, but it had an upstairs. Mm -hmm. You know how most houses had pictures on the wall of the family? We didn't have any of that. It was just, you'd see like pictures of like wolves and of deer. Like paintings? Was on there, yeah. And I got down to the bed and I creaked in and his eyes just like, I, I never, I looked in the crack, but I never pushed it open before. And his eyes popped open and he's like, what the fuck do you want? So he really didn't want you in there. Yeah, and Jess was Jess was there. Jess was in his arms. How did she look at you? Huh? Did she look towards you? Did she look at you? No, she looked away. And 
he walked, he got up out of bed, and he was frustrated. I remember he threw the blank down, he, he told her to stay put. And he got up, he had his boxers on, he had a white beater that didn't fit. Like I said, he was big, but he was saggy, too. Like, mm -hmm. he was bigger than he is now. And I remember wa him walking over, and he was very direct, and he grabbed me by the arm, and he yanked me and walked down the stairs, and he pushed me on the couch. And I remember he got a beer and a cigarette. And I was only about six years old. And he said to me, he goes, well, what's, what's your problem? What's wrong with you? And I remember telling him that um, yeah, I remember telling him that uh, um, I asked him why he never hugged me like Jess or Amelia, why he didn't ever take me into his room at night. What did he say? He said, oh, is that what you want? He said, you want to lay down with that, you little faggot? Do you know what faggot meant then? No, I didn't know. I just thought it was like an idiot. Or and he just idiot. laughed at me. He laughed right in my face. And his breath stunk from that rancid tobacco that he always chewed. He says, is that what you want? You want a kiss? And I remember he took a cigarette and he put it out right by my lip. Why did you think you're acting as molesting your sisters? Was he actually fucking them? Yeah? Yeah, I, at first, he, um, he would, with Jess, I couldn't tell because she would just say that he would just rub her and pet her and make her feel good. He was just, he would never do anything, he just rubbed her. And Amelia, my older sister, I didn't know, he didn't, she didn't say anything to us. Whenever Dad got mad, she would go with him and make him feel better. But the day that I found out, um, we were laying in bed, and um, we were all in one, be uh, one room together. Amelia had her own little bed, and Jess and I slept on another one together. And um, he came in, he was drunk. I remember he slammed the door and he was singing. He was always singing Simon and Garfunkel stuff. And he walked up the stairs and he pushed open the door. And he just had this, just half smile with his fucking yellow teeth. And, Je and Amelia, she got out of bed and walked to him like, she knew what she was going to do, and she was going to make things okay, because that's what she always did when Dad was drunk. She walked out. Offered herself up for the rest but, of the year. Buddy, he put his arm away, and he goes, no, oh, sweetie, I think it's Jess's turn. And she walked up to him. She didn't think anything was wrong, and he put his hand in He rubbed his fingers around her belt, and he put his fingers inside of her, and he tasted it. And he said, he said, you're ready? I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was, and then he took her off. But you knew it wasn't right. I knew it wasn't right. But he took her off, and she screamed. And I'd never heard her scream before. He locked us in, too. You had, like, one of those little keyhole things that you could actually see out. And I could, I could see just the dark hallway, and I heard screaming. And when he finished, he brought her back. He didn't even bother putting her shirt on. He just put these little white panties on her. And were, you could tell she was bleeding. And he pushed her inside the room. And he told Amelia, he said, come here. You got to clean up the room. Your little sister made a mess. And then he handed me a bottle of peroxide and some fucking cotton. He told me, you got to clean her up. When did you figure out what it was he was doing? To her? Well, that it was sexual. I don't know. I just remember cleaning her. She was... She was hurting so much. And she was crying. And she was torn down there.
tell us anything about the day you killed your father? That moment of no more? I remember I was, I was 12 and I was trying to get, I don't know, I just felt so much rage at this point. I'd been watching my sister and at this point I knew. Right. You know, I had started getting er erections myself. Well, by that time you've had some sex ed in school. Or other kids are at least talking. Yeah. But I remember wanting to kill my dad so bad. I remember fantasizing about it. I remember that that was the only time that I felt comfortable when I was at home. How did it feel to hit him with a baseball bat? It's fucking good. Did you ever play baseball? No. I mean, you must have played in the street or with kids sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to play with the kids. I wasn't really ever any good at it, to be but honest. But I'm just saying you knew how to swing a bat. Yeah, I knew how to swing a bat, but I knew how to hit. That's one thing my dad taught me. I knew how to hit. So how did it feel to kill him? It felt so fucking good. I felt so good to like hear that crack. And I just wanted to keep... I just wanted to keep hitting his fucking head in. But to see when Amelia put the bag over... When, when Jess put the bag over his head. And to see the blood spurt out and to see it break. It felt so fucking good, but then it hurt so... What? It felt so fucking good to kill him, but then it hurt so bad to see my sister lying there. Look, she looked just like him with the bag over her head and blood. But and I just felt like he deserved you, it. He did. So what happened? How, you were how old when you killed your dad? Twelve? Twelve. Where'd you guys go? Well, we live on the southwest side of Chicago. I mean, who took care of you? No one did. Not for two years. You going to foster care? No. Where'd you guys go? Jess and I ran off, and the first couple of nights we spent hiding in dumpsters. Yeah? I remember well, hiding then, in... Then where did you go? That's when we started to sneak into houses. I figured out... You could watch a house because we had nothing to do. People didn't watch kids. We'd watch a house and wait for people to leave and we'd sneak into their house and we'd live in their basement for weeks. Like people were out of town? Yeah. We'd try to find houses where it just looked like there wasn't much going on. How did you feed yourself? We'd come upstairs and try to feed on stuff that they Can weren't counting. Cans of stuff? Bread, cans. If there were leftovers, we wouldn't eat it all, but we'd take some. What happened after two years? Um, that's when we met. Uh, uh, we, we stuck into this one house, a bungalow, right? And um, we noticed it was just this feeble lady, real squinty eyed, older, not old, old in her 60s, but looked like she was in her 80s from the way that she moved. And we never saw anyone else walking in and out of the house. So we snuck into the backyard and the back door was open and we snuck into her basement. We stayed there and started to come up and eat on the food. She never noticed, never really came to the basement. And after about two weeks, after two weeks, she walked down the stairs one night. She opened up the door right before bed. And she walked down the stairs about halfway. And she just started singing, Hush, Little Baby. We didn't know why. We were just tucked down in the corner in the black behind some boxes and stuff. And then she just said goodnight and walked back up the stairs. And she kept doing this night after night. 
And after a while, she started saying prayers out loud and talking about her son who died in Iraq and her daughter who died of leukemia. And she'd pray and then she'd leave. And then one last night she came down and she did the same thing. She started saying, Nice little baby, and then she went into her prayer and she started talking about her husband and how bad she missed her kids and her husband. She said she was talking about her husband and how he died of testicular cancer. And um, she said good night. And the next day, I remember we walked up the stairs after she had left for work. <laughs> On the breakfast table, she had made eggs and bacon, sunny side up for both of us. And she had toast out and she had freshly cut hash browns. They went like that store brought stuff. And she had a note out that just said, clean the dishes when you're done. Did you eventually move in with her? We did, but she kept that up. For how she long? didn't approach us. Till you guys were ready. Yeah, and she would every day cook something and leave it there in the morning, and then she would give us more chores. And you did them? Yeah. Did she raise you then? For a couple of years, yeah. She raised us for a couple of years until we were 18. And Did you love her? And, you know, that was a lot of the same thing as what Amelia used to do. And Why do you have to kill bad people now? It's just, it's not just bad people, it's men. It's always, you ever notice it's always men that do this shit? Pretty much, yeah. You never hear... Oh, one, once in a while, but usually it's like a 22-year-old teacher and a 14-year-old You never boy hear of a woman doing it. To a baby. No. You never do. You always see men doing it. How does that make you feel about men? It's disgusting. I mean, it hurts to be one sometimes. To... Do you ever get aroused when I you do. get children? No, not with children. No, that's what I'm asking. I'm sure you get aroused with regular girls and your own age or whatever. But not with children. How does it feel to kill men who've done bad things to girls? It feels like I'm doing good. It feels like I'm actually saving someone. It feels like... Okay, Barb was... Barb was a medic. She worked as a nurse. She could help people, and we couldn't do that shit. We didn't get high school educated. At 12 years old, we were on the streets. But we wanted to help people too, you know? And I figured, so many people are so fucking cowardice. Cops won't do it. What if cops come in and domestic abuse? They fucking look at you. They say, has he hurt the child yet? To a fucking eight pound baby if he hurts the child, the child's dead. And they say you gotta call us back after he's hurt him. So who the fuck's gonna do this? You are, because it feels good to see that bat. It does feel good. So how did you feel when you found the house tonight in the storm? And you realized she needed, what's her name again? Amelia. That you needed your help. No, the, the mother, the girl there in the house. Hey, Stephanie. Yeah. I don't mean you found the child, the couple that took you in during the storm. I know. I think Stephanie. Don't worry about it. How did you feel when you heard him yelling at her? It's the same old thing. I feel like that's every man. We just left the house where that shit was happening. Well, what was your, did you have a plan? I didn't want to because... Uh, 
first time, I mean, we'd only, I don't know, I've never really done that to help an adult, you know, like. Because like she could go, did you want her to go with you? I don't want her to come with us, though. Okay, no, I just. Okay. I can't trust anyone that's outside of Jess and I. Mm -hmm. But it was seeing. I mean, where the fuck did this guy get little girl's clothes? You know, where did this guy get little clothes? Why is she all cut up? He's yelling at her. She's a victim. Clearly she's depressed or something that's making her helpless. Yeah. So you came back and you killed him. Yeah. How did you expect her to respond? I expect her to be grateful. Yeah, but what did she do instead? She looked at us like we were going to hurt her. I'm not going to hurt her. Why would I hurt her? I'm just trying to take away the guy that hurt her, you know? And she just looked at us like ran away like I'm the bad guy. So what do you want from her? I want her to open the door. I want her to take it. I want her to hug me. I want her to know that it's okay. You want her to feel safe with you. Yeah. That's all I have to. That's all I need to know. Do you okay. need to tell me anything else? I don't think so. Okay, but let's trade places. You come with me. Come sit here. What? You can sit on the couch. You can bring the pillow with you if you want. What do you want to tell us about? What's his name? Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul. You're looking sad. Why are you sad right in this minute? Are you my husband? We fight all the time. And I can't stand to be around him. And I can't even look at him. Why? What's your baby like? Layla. That's a 
pretty name. She was the happiest baby. She never cried. She cried, but not like most babies cry. Mm -hmm. Even when she cried, it was like a little whimper. It wasn't like a annoying, screaming. Cranky. Was she pretty? Oh. Was she, she was so pretty. Was she fat? No. <laughs> she had long brown hair. It was curly and these two little dimples. Brown eyes. That's like her dad. How much did you love her? A lot. How did it feel to love her? She made me alive. Every morning I'd wake up excited to see her, to play with her, feed her. There's no way, there's nothing that equals the way a young child looks at the mother. Because when they look at you, you are their world. I mean, they come from your body, you feed them from your body. I mean, when you're nursing them. It, it's it's so close. I mean, they're so adoring of you. Yeah. The way they look at you. How did it make you feel? Happy, desired, loved, needed. Needed. She depended on you for everything. Big responsibility. Yeah. What kind of dad was Paul? He's the best dad. In fact, when um, when I had our ultrasound, we went in together, and um, when it came up. They put that like jelly on yeah, your so stomach cold. and it feels so cold. And icky. <laughs> yeah, it's disgusting. And then they get the little, um, I don't know what they're called. The little thing. The little things. Um, she it's like a mouse. Them. Yeah, it kind of. <laughs> um, and the picture showed up on the screen and I remember him locking fingers with me and just not letting go. And he was so excited after the ultrasound <laughs> really? that we, um, he wanted to go to the baby store on the way home. We, he picked out these little pink Air Jordans because, <laughs> of course, he wanted her to play basketball because he played basketball in high school. They were the cutest little things. So everything was going good. Yeah. Tell us about the accident. Um, we were driving back from the fair that comes to town every year. And I was playing with Layla in the back seat. I had my back turned to her and I had one of her little McDonald's toys and we were playing with them. And um, Paul has a tendency to not stop at stop signs, like do a rolling stop. And I always yell at him for it. And um, I remember just as we got into the intersection, I looked at him. And I smiled, because Layla was laughing in the back seat. And I saw in his eyes just this, this instant shock. And it, it, this car, out of nowhere, this blue minivan just slammed into us and broadsided out of Paul. And Layla, she was sitting on the same side. And Paul was unconscious. I looked over at him to see if he was okay, and he had blood like gushing from his face. Did the car hit you hard? Yeah. Really hard. And um, I remember being so scared. And then I looked down. 
something warm in my lap. What did you do when you saw that? I didn't know what to do. I picked it up. Came. It's a problem. It's a hospital. And they took me as well. Were you screaming or quiet? I was screaming. They had to hold me back because I saw the sheet on the side of the road, the rest of her body. And I just you never would again. No, not in one piece. And I, I tried to get out of the ambulance and they, they held me back. They jumped on me and held my wrist and they gave me a shot of tranquilizer or some sort. And I just hold that girl. That you never did again. And whose fault did you feel the accident was? Paul's. Because you had to hate someone. No, it was Paul's fault. Why was it his fault? Because he never stopped completely. He wasn't paying attention. So these people show up tonight with this little girl. What was that like? They let you kind of take care of her, didn't they? I got to hold her, and I got to joke with her, and do this little thing that Layla used to like, little like spiders all the way up to them. Mm -hmm. and they love that. They love that. It surprises them every time. Yeah. She was laughing, and she fell asleep. I felt like a mom again. And then you and your husband straightened something out, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And you made love to him. I made love to him. He touched me. He moved my hair. What happened to your depression and everything when you touched him, when he touched you? I felt like this whole weight just lifted off of me. Like I had hope for happiness. A new family. Maybe a new baby. But you could feel again. I could feel. So what was the cutting all about? I couldn't feel anything. Could you even feel when you cut yourself? I needed to feel something. I needed to feel anything. So when you cut yourself, how did it feel? Ah, uh, like a release. Where did you cut yourself? My arms, my thighs. Paul kissed my thighs. Where you cut yourself? Yeah. He kissed them and he said, I still think you're beautiful. Because you have scars from that? Mm -hmm. So you felt something besides pain? I felt beauty. I felt loved. For the first time in seven months. For the first time in seven months. So you took a shower and then you come out and what do you see? <laughs> Just stay.
stay there like that. Just wait until somebody gets the impulse to speak. You can start out with repetition, just simple repetition. I can hear you crying. I can hear you crying. You can hear me crying. I can hear you crying. You can hear me crying. I can hear you crying. Repeat, Katie. You can hear me crying. I can hear you crying. Your voice is so sad. My voice sounds sad. Your voice sounds sad. My voice sounds sad. My voice sounds sad. Repeat. I'm not going to hurt you. Just repeat for now. I'll tell you. My voice sounds sad. My voice sounds sad. My voice sounds sad. My voice sounds sad. You're getting louder. I'm getting louder. 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 I'm getting louder. They're getting louder. You're yelling at me. I'm yelling. You're yelling at me. You're yelling at me. You're yelling at me and snobbing. I'm yelling at you and sobbing. You're yelling at me and sobbing. I'm yelling at you and sobbing. I'm yelling at me and sobbing. I'm yelling at you and sobbing. You're yelling at me and sobbing. I'm yelling at you and sobbing. You're yelling at me and sobbing. I'm yelling at you and sobbing. You're yelling at me and sobbing. Now say whatever you want. Now say you're not gonna hurt her. Just, just from that point, say it right there. I'm not gonna hurt you. Repeat. You're not gonna hurt me. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt me. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. Not Say whatever you want, Katie. You killed my hope. I killed your hope? You killed my hope. I, I killed your hope? You killed my hope. A man who cuts you your hope? A man that cuts me my hope. A man who cuts you your hope? A man that cuts me my hope. A man that cuts you your hope? He was my everything. Get her out of the bathroom. He cuts your everything. Get her out of the bathroom. I'm not gonna hurt you. You're not gonna hurt me. I'm not gonna hurt you. You're not gonna hurt me. I'm not like him. You're not like him. I'm not like him. You're not like him. I'm not like you him. You are not like him. I'm not like him. You're not like him. Where's your daughter? Where's my daughter? Where's your daughter? Where's my daughter? Where's your daughter? Where is my daughter? Make him go Where's away, Katie. Where's my daughter? Can you get him to go away? Where's your daughter? Get out of my fucking house! Repeat. Get out of your fucking house. Get out of my fucking house! Get out of your fucking house? Get out of my fucking house! Get out of your fucking house! Get out of my fucking house! Get out of your fucking house! We saved you! You saved me! We saved you! You saved me! You're under we were not on a loop for you! Oh. Tell him what you think of him, Katie. What is he? You're a murderer! I'm a murderer? Get him out of your house, Katie. <laughs> you have other ways. I have other ways. He was abusing you. He was abusing me. He was abusing you. He was abusing you. You are a fucking asshole. I'm a fucking asshole. 
You're a fucking asshole. I'm a fucking You're asshole. You're a fucking asshole. I'm a fucking You're asshole. You're a fucking asshole. I'm a fucking asshole. You are a fucking asshole. You're a coward. You deserve I... dirt. I deserve dirt. You Please. deserve dirt. Casey, okay, don't answer him. You deserve dirt. I deserve dirt. Don't answer him, Katie. Don't say anything. Get her out. Make her come out of the bathroom. You're quiet. I'm quiet. You're quiet. I'm quiet. Don't she... answer, Katie. Don't say anything. You're stuck behind there. It's... We can help you. You don't have to be hurt anymore. You don't have to hide anymore. We can set you free from all of that. Your husband was a bad man. And he killed your daughter. You said it! He killed your daughter! We're not the fucking bad guys here! We're trying to help you! Get her out. Just come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. <laughs> Stand up. You're weak. Maybe you deserve to be like with a guy like that. You wouldn't stand up your fucking daughter anyways. She might turn you in, you better get her out. Get out of the fucking get out, please. We're not gonna hurt you. We're just gonna help you move on. And we're gonna help you move on. It's okay. It's okay. Don't you wanna see Amelia? We'll let you be with Amelia. You can come with us. We've got a place in South Carolina. <laughs> it's okay. We help kids. We pull kids away from places like this. You can come help us raise Amelia. You can help us with the other kids there. You're a good person. You don't gotta keep hurting yourself like this. Just come out and talk. Just come out and talk. Why don't you speak to me? You can say anything you want now, can you? Sorry if I hurt. I'm sorry if I hurt you, but I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt you. I have nothing left to live for. You have stuff to live for. I have nothing left to live for. You have Amelia. I you, have nothing left. You have Amelia. Where's Amelia? Amelia's with us. Come with us. What did you do with Amelia? She's fine. She's fine. She's with Jessica and I. You're lying. No. Her father was just like your husband. No. You're her lying. father was just like your husband. You can't. Yeah. You're a murderer. No, I'm helping you. Just like we helped. Where is Amelia? She I want to see her. You can see I her. No, I want to see her you now. You can see her if you come out. You can help us raise her if you come out. I'm not the bad guy here. Jessica's not the bad guy here. Your murdering fucking husband was the bad guy. He's not a murderer. You said it. You said he killed your dog. We heard you. No. Whose fault was it?
open the door. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Okay. Amelia's downstairs. Okay. As long as I get to see her. You're going to. Promise you'll get to. I promise. promise I can see her. I promise. You promise she's downstairs. Sweetie, I'm not gonna hurt you in Amelia's farm. I would never hurt Amelia. I would never hurt Amelia. I would never hurt you. Turn towards him when you're ready. Okay. I'll see you. How do we turn this off? Just press the red button. Oh, no, no. Katie's face is going to be getting close. That was okay. I'm with the camera. Go ahead. Can I start uh, over here? No, I think what you did is fine. I don't think we need to do more. I think no, I'm saying with the talking about her. Yeah, go ahead. So, what um, were you feeling yeah. when I told you to get her out of there when I made the action really clear? Well, again, like, like I said, you run through these progressions. Like, <clears throat> I, well, I run through these progressions where the last, the moment before, the last thing was like seeing her scared and her running from us and it just, it, it broke my heart and like I want, I didn't want to scare her, like I, I wanted to be as gentle as humanly possible but the thing is with all that rage built up inside you from the life that you've yeah, had. Also you're misunderstood <laughs> too. Yeah and, and also again, like I feel like I'm helping her but from her reaction, part of me is also saying there's a, there's a part of me that's doubting it. Part of me is starting to think maybe she was involved too. Part of it was trying to talk yourself into it. Yeah. So Katie, how did it feel when I want to go back and just say how, how did it feel when I wouldn't let you talk? Oh, it was really hard. Because what was going on? <laughs> because I wanted to say stuff because I was thinking stuff. Mm hmm But. I, what happened when I said to find it inside yourself? The strength. Um. I don't know. It was. I think after having that time to be quiet, it like gave me the strength. Does that make sense? Yeah, because the thing is, is you really can't, at some point, you can't debate your way out of this room. Right, no I can't, because I'm, I'm in, locked in the bathroom. Right. And it was really interesting, because here she is in the bathroom with a razor, okay, where she's been hurting herself. <laughs> and, all, and then, let me see if I can say this right. And then you're on the outside, it sort of switched. You were on the outside crying for her to come out. So it was almost like you took the weaker position. It's like it switched, because first you're chasing her, right? Yeah. Clearly you're bigger than her, and yeah. clearly you're better able to. And you try to talk her into all this stuff, and she tries to sort of defend herself for a while, and then you're quiet. And then suddenly your hope is dead, so you turn into him. That's what I saw. Yeah, that no, was yeah. Kind of a reverse role in you that. turned. It is. I become the killer. Yeah. You turned. Well, it is kind of real because when she pulled her hand back, I really thought she was gonna hit me. I really did. Like that was a natural really flinch. Not too. <laughs> it's a good thing Katie had a reason. Do you, either of you want to say anything else about it? Um, not really. Uh, well, one one thing, just to to your point about, um, uh, yeah, I mean, my natural impulse, obviously, my feeling, like, I, legitimately, I, I I'm hurt by the fact that she's scared of me. And my Brad, his impulse is to, when, when you know that you hurt someone or that they're scared of you, it, it hurts so bad, I You feel I like cry. a monster, right? Yeah, and I, I personally cry. I'm not, I don't know how right that is for the character. Well, I just wanna say, I mean, psychologically, <clears throat> truthfully, kids who, they, you, know, you would think that kids who were abused would grow up and not abuse their children because they know what it's like. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's very interesting uh, research that's been done, and basically what happens to a kid that's abused blames himself because they have to have this connection to the parent. Kids have to believe that their parents love them or they have failure to right. thrive. Yeah. So what happens is, is kids develop this thing, oh, well, my father only hit me when I deserved it, and they justify it, all right, because they need to keep this psychological connection with a parent. So then they grow up to be abusers. So here you are, you do what she think, what you think is a favor for her. 
And then she's basically telling you, you know, that you're a monster just like your dad, which is what you didn't want to be, which is why you're killing people to begin with, so you won't be like him, so you can be yeah. different. But when that reality hits you, you flip. Kind well, that, that was the natural progression. Totally. I didn't know what was going on, but yeah. It was good. Yeah. It worked totally. It was completely right, and it comes out of a really right on preparation. Really good. Excellent. So we should turn this off and call those guys. Yep. Yeah. I mean